Does the beanie bubble suck? <laughs> Now, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, it's late. <laughs> I saw this movie earlier today, and I'm thinking, you know what? I just wanna film it before I go to bed. Have you guys ever had that feeling if you guys make your own content? Just get her done. That's the motto of today's video. But also people will be talking about how this is like the fourth or fifth business biopic we've had this year. We've had Air, the Air Jordan movie, which is still my favorite of the year, believe it or not. We've had Blackberry, which is nice to see a Canadian movie get so much recognition nowadays. We have Tetris, which came out on Apple TV+, Plus. great movie, and now we have the Beanie Bubble also coming out to Apple TV Plus. I believe there's another one with like Cheetos or hot chips or whatever the case may be. I don't know. I didn't see it. But how does the Beanie Bubble stand up to those other business biopics? And the question still remains, does it suck? Hey guys, my name is Brandon, aka The Brando Critic. Thank you guys so much for being with me today. I really do appreciate it. I was able to see the Beanie Bubble a few days early, not too much earlier. But of course, I'm here to tell you if it sucks or not. But let me know, guys. Have you guys had your own Beanie Babies growing up? I had one. I had like the green one with the soccer ball on his chest. I think I sold that thing years ago, but that was after the whole Beanie Baby craze. I didn't sell it for like $50,000 or anything like that. Are you guys excited for this movie? Whatever the case may be, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section down below and make sure you guys stick around to the end of the video so you know my rating of the film or else maybe going to a film that might not be right for you. Now, let's get started. So Kristen Gore is our director along with Damien Kulash. And for Kristen Gore, this is actually her first feature film. And I believe Damien Kulash is actually in a band and he did more of his own musical video directing. And the movie stars Sarah Snook, Elizabeth Banks, Zach Galifianakis, who looks so different from what I just think Zach Galifianakis looks like in my head. He will always be that guy from Hangover. That is always how I will remember him. And it also stars Geraldine Viswanathan. She's fantastic in this movie, by the way. And the story really is about the rise and the fall of the beanie baby craze and it's told through the perspective of three different women who all worked with ty warner or who were close with ty warner through his rise and fall now before anyone says anything you know oh it's a bunch of women taking revenge at men woke well i it's really not that i really didn't see anything in this movie to warrant that kind of criticism but again that's just me getting that out of the way first. So what did I think of this movie? Well, like I said earlier, I only owned the one Beanie Baby and I sold that thing years ago. I never collected them, but I have collected things in the past. I mean, look behind me, guys. There's movies galore. You know, I collected vinyl records, classic video games, and current video games, but I also collected hockey cards and Pokemon cards as a kid. So I have had that collector mentality before. And if you were one of those people, then this movie will really resonate with you because when you're a collector, not only do you just want to accumulate as much as you possibly can or at least you know the good quality stuff but you also understand when something is rare or it has value or it's in demand you know there's a limited edition for this thing I mean every single blu-ray or box set you know this is the special edition the director's cut the uncut version even action figures like some of those Star Wars ones it's like one out of five thousand ever made you know so there's some rarity to that and even certain Pokemon cards I have are worth lots of money ungraded graded you know I do like that world and some people can really get into it. I know some people who collect hockey jerseys and hockey memorabilia and anything like that. Now, I have a point to why I'm talking about this first. I think The Beanie Bubble is a good movie. It's an entertaining watch, but it's not a great movie. I think this is a good movie with a great conversation piece attached to it where the conversation after the movie takes place might be a bit more engaging than the actual movie. Kind of like Limitless. The movie Limitless is fine, but I love the discussion that you have with people afterwards. What would you do with that pill? Would it be good for society? Would it be good for you? What would you do with it? That kind of stuff. That's what really, you know, gets me going. And this movie brings up a lot of great conversation topics and how that collector craze is still big today. I mean, you got cryptocurrency, you got NFTs, which I've had these explained to me so many times. I still just don't understand it from a fundamental level, but that's neither here nor there. But now you have like VHS tapes being worth tons of money on eBay, which makes no sense to me either, especially for ones that aren't rare, like the Disney VHS tapes, like they're everywhere, guys. But of course, back in the 90s, you had the dot-com race, right? Even my parents got into that one. This movie just brings up lots of the ins and outs of business, how it affects people and how certain ideas can just come out of nowhere and just take over the world. I find that stuff fascinating. And if you find that stuff fascinating as well, then the Beanie Bubble is definitely worth a watch. One line that they keep on talking about in this movie, and I really do agree with this in terms of just life. You have to build your own ship. 
You can't just wait for your ship to come into port. You have to build your own and set sail, but you also have to protect it from pirates because there's always people out there who are going to try to either steer you off course or just raid your ship. I think that's a great metaphor for life, and this movie really does tackle that in a very good way. Ty Warner, of course, Zach Galifianakis' character, the creator of the Beanie Baby, created one of the most successful toy companies of all time right? And he keeps talking about how in America, it's the land of opportunity. You can make something of yourself here with hard work, determination, you can be successful. And yes, that's true. But there's also a lot of luck involved. A lot of great people have to be surrounding you. And you gotta be f ruthless. Agreeable people and people who just are people pleasers and maybe take a back seat are not generally the people who get that ultra level of success. You gotta be ruthless. You gotta be a mean son of a to get up there. And not everyone has it. I don't think I have it to be a mean son of a to just cut someone by the throat to get what I want. I'm definitely very motivated and determined and dedicated, but I don't think in my core of being, I could like someone over to get what I want. Like really. And you see Ty Warner in this movie, he uses people. He gets close to them, but you understand that it's only because he is getting something out of it. He is furthering his life, he's furthering his career, he's furthering his success due to other people. And then when those people are no longer serving him anymore, <coughs> bye-bye. He's narcissistic, egotistical, and psychopathic, like straight up. And I know people in my own personal life ended relationships with me because I was no longer serving their end goal of being a success story. Basically, you know what? You are no longer serving my purpose. My purpose? Yeah. We're not friends anymore. We don't need you anymore. So yes, this movie tackles the mindset of business people. People who want to rise to the top of their profession. Now, I'm not saying that all CEOs are psychopaths, but definitely certain people with those kind of traits are able to get there a lot faster. But it also shows us how the company got so huge. And it is inspiring to see the amount of innovation that this company really did come up with. Now, a little bit of a personal tangent. I will make a video about this in my, my movies I'm watching and channel update. So I got laid off from the film industry because there is no film industry right now with all the strikes and everything. And I got a job at a nursery being a plant salesman. I knew nothing about plants and this is my first sales job. So watching this movie, it's a real eye opener for me going, okay, you know what? This is how to be a really good salesperson, to get really good at marketing and to learn about business innovation. This company did some great things. They really did use the limited edition angle very, very well because once it's a limited edition, as a customer and as a consumer, you don't want to miss out. You got to get it right now. And that's the one thing. You don't necessarily want to gain something positive. You don't want to miss out and you want to avoid the negative. That's good marketing, as well as creating a checklist. So now you have a checklist of all the different types of Beanie Babies out there. So now it's not about what you have, it's about what you don't have. And of course, you want to avoid the negative, you got to finish that checklist. You mean human beings, you know, they want to complete things. They don't like having things unfinished, for the most part. You got to complete them all, you got to collect them all, got to catch them all. Pokemon did this perfectly. And you had good old fashioned word of mouth. It might not be as quick, as television ads, but it's effective. Good word of mouth, you just can't beat that kind of marketing. They were also one of the first companies to have chat rooms and a web page in the early stages of the internet with color and with flash and a web page where you can actually go to find information about the product. That was so breathtaking at the time. And according to the movie anyway, they were one of the first people to do it. And when the website would break down when there's too many people using it, you would think that'd be a publicity nightmare. No, there is the saying, there's no such thing as bad publicity. I mean, that's the thing. Oh my God, our website's down. It's because so many people wanted to use it. That's another story. And oh my God, yeah, that's right. Beanie Babies. There's always something going on and they're always staying in the limelight. It's perfect. And eBay markups. Using this new website called eBay, understanding what the secondary market is, knowing what the demand is, and understanding that if our product is hard to get and it's in high demand, it's worth a lot more money, and that means $200 million a month worth of profits. Are you kidding me? Unbelievable. And I mean, just the toy itself as an invention. I mean, stuffed animals used to be like these fabric statues. They didn't move, like these big giant teddy bears or those big like Mickey Mouse, um, you know, dolls were just like, eh. and you couldn't move them. But Beanie Babies, they were less stuffed. 
You can actually move the head around, you can move the arms. It allowed for more imagination from the kids, and it had a lot more personality that way, you know what I mean? And not only were they cute, they had a ton of variety as well, but then he also invented smaller versions so that kids could take them everywhere, including in their backpack, to school. You can take your Beanie Baby with you everywhere. You don't even think about these things anymore today, but it's just genius. And I understand that this review is really just going over, you know, like the business model of the company, but that's what this movie really does focus on is how this company turned into this really great thing, almost documentary-like. And if you find that stuff fascinating, like myself, then you will really enjoy this movie, like I'm talking about right now. And of course, they all have their names and little poems and the tags as well, but that's the thing. I think the topic of the movie and the overall experience watching it, it's very entertaining and I think it's better than the actual movie itself. Like this is a competently made movie, but if you really break it down with the characters and the story, it's not the best and there are some messy moments. Now the characters, Zach Galifianakis and Geraldine Viswanathan, they were the two standouts. I thought that their performances were actually really, really good. Even though Zach Galifianakis gets like angry at some points and like he's supposed to get emotional, which I'm thinking, okay, he doesn't have the most range as an actor, but he does play a pretty good narcissistic psychopath and at the beginning of the movie you're like oh you know what i really like this guy i want to be on his side i really want to be business partners with him but then slowly his personality starts to show so kind of like his character in the movie you want to really like him but you start to know okay this guy he doesn't really like me he's just using me for his own personal gain so i thought that he worked for the movie and geraldine she's just a good actress and i really did enjoy her character but the rest of the characters around her I didn't find too interesting, I gotta be honest with that. Cause you see all those interpersonal relationships between everyone in the movie, you know, characters lie to each other, they cheat on each other, they fall in love with each other, you know, all that movie fluff. And it's fine here, there's nothing necessarily wrong with it, like it's not done badly. But I would say that it's spread a bit too thin for anyone to really get invested, for it to really, you know, be heavy or impactful. It's just stuff that's in the movie. You know what I mean? It doesn't hit you right here. It doesn't make you think about it. You think about just the overall business and you're like, oh my God, yeah, I lived through that. And for someone like me or my family, we're like, yeah, we, we lived through that. We were the 90s, you know, type of family. But the characters, we didn't relate to them. We didn't really connect with them because there's really nothing to connect to. Like Elizabeth Banks' character, she works in an auto shop and she's not really doing too well. She's down on her luck and she's taking care of her brother who's in a wheelchair. But then of course she falls in love with Ty and then of course they become business partners and they fall in love and they have some romance and they have some hardships. It's just standard movie stuff. But then he also has a relationship with Sarah Souk and kind of the same thing. Like she's a mother with two daughters. You know, that doesn't really get explored too much, but they do have their own relationship. Again, not too much time or depth put into that relationship. And Geraldine Viswanathan, she's living with her family, she's going to med school. Of course her parents really want her to go to med school and don't want her to be really focusing on the company, but of course she rises through the ranks and she becomes like the main marketer and one who really gives Ty all the great ideas about eBay and markups and all that stuff. You know, it's all fine and dandy, right? And the main thread that goes through all the stories is that all three of these women all find compassion in Ty's character. They're lured into his passion and his quirky personality and his motivational speeches. They all want to be part of his world. They want to be a part of his success story. But of course, they all get f***ed over by him and realize that he's only there to use them for his own personal success. But you also understand that these characters, when going through that, they got to learn how to stand up for themselves and, you know, of course, protect your ship from pirates. Which is a fine message, and I do like that message, but... Again, if it was maybe one story and they really focused on that, I could get connected to it more. But I do like all three of these characters. They're just not, you know, blowing my socks off. And they tell the story in a non-linear way, which is clever in some scenes. And it does make it a bit more interesting when they have like some intercuts. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. We're in this timeline, which mirrors something that happened in this timeline. But sometimes it's just used for a gimmick because I'm thinking, you know what? You could tell the story in the pure linear fashion. And I don't think it would make any difference. It might even make it more comprehensible because there are some scenes where I'm like, wait a minute, are we in the past? Are we in the future? At first, they would actually show like the clock or at least like the, the year. It would go from 1983 to 1993, then back to 1985, 1995, and so on and so forth. But then later on in the movie, they just stopped doing it, kind of saying, all right, guys, you should know what's happening right now. So it's not consistent, but overall it had some good moments, but it also had some sloppy moments. And I believe that this movie is rated R as well, which I don't think does this movie any favors because this movie is about the rise and fall of like a toy company, but yet people are like dropping F-bombs 
and I feel like the tone is not necessarily cohesive, especially with the story as well. It just felt like it was kind of a mishmash of ideas and tones especially. So I do not think it actually needed to be R-rated. But those are my only problems with the movie. I thought overall this was actually a very entertaining watch. I'm going to give this movie a 3 out of 5. I'm really glad that I saw it. I think it's the worst out of the business movies that I saw this year out of Air, Blackberry, and Tetris. I'm still glad that I saw it. And if you guys like the world of business and of finance and entrepreneurship, then I do think that this movie is for you. Or if you had a beanie baby and were in that craze, definitely, then I think this movie is for you as well. And those complaints are not necessarily like big flaws that like derail the movie. I just think that, of course, if you find that stuff fascinating, the beanie bubble and the business world, then this movie will definitely work for you more than someone who doesn't really like that kind of stuff. So does the movie suck? I don't think so, but I can understand why someone might think that this movie sucks because, again, they're not part of that world, they don't find it very interesting, or they want a deep character study, and you don't really get that here. So there you go, guys. Those are my thoughts on the Beanie Bubble. If you guys enjoyed it, definitely hit like and subscribe. I would really appreciate all the support. And if you want to support me on a more personal level, then Patreon is in the link down below in the description. We have monthly watch-alongs. You guys get to see content early, and I give you guys movies every single month. So if that interests you, the link is down below in the description. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.